Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tip Off 2022-2023. Dr. Ron Poniewoz is joined, as always, by Professor Larry Kelly, member of the Luxembourg Garbage Gel uh, Kelly and George Law Firm, excuse me, and uh, varsity baseball coach at Shenango, former ninth grade boys basketball coach at Newcastle. Larry, and this, as Larry would tell me, this is the award-winning Tip Off. So, Larry, welcome back. Always a pleasure being here, Ronnie. Uh, I actually went to a Newcastle basketball practice last night. It was the first one I've attended since my re my retirement as a coach. And uh, I got to say, I miss it. I do. Uh, I miss it. I almost got up and started coaching, but I realized I have no voice anymore. Hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the hurricane are just they're doing great things. But I don't know if you know this, uh, Isaiah Boyce their leading scorer has a fracture in his foot and he's in a cast for the next couple of weeks. Oh, wow. So they're going to be tested here moving forward, but uh, they've been playing really, really well, but uh, they'll miss Isaiah, but that's something we can talk about later. Right now we got to talk about one of my favorite players of all time, mm. Braden Ziggy Ziggler, my man, he lit it up last week, buddy. He lit, never met a shot he didn't like. Don't get me wrong. But, man, he was stroking him last week. Tell us about Braden Ziggler. He is our athlete of the week, is Ziggy. Bra Braden Ziggler, a six-foot senior forward from Shenango High School. Larry's guy, as uh, Larry would, would tell you. He had uh, three performances last week, 15 points in a 69-26 win over Laurel. 25 points in a 63-29 win over Wilmington, and he backed that up with 29 points in an 80-65 win over Northgate, and that Northgate win, win was a section game on the road. It's a very nice performance for uh, Braden on the road. It was a big win against Northgate on the road, and uh, listen, Braden Ziegler's special. Uh, you know, I've watched him uh, since he was a sophomore, uh, he was the catcher on our Whippeal championship team and our, our state runner-up team. Uh, the bigger the moment, the better he gets. Uh, he's just one of those kids that the moment is never too big for him. Uh, he, he's just, he has that it factor. And, uh, you know, in a game on the road against Northgate, to, to put up 29 points, it's hard to win high school basketball games on the road. But, uh He's just one of those kids that when the moment is big, he's there to meet it and actually becomes bigger. He can really stroke it from three. Uh, I remember him as a ninth grader. You know, I was still coaching ninth grade basketball. We were supposed to play Shenango uh, in the Nishanik tournament. And I'm watching this little number five as a ninth grader just make three-pointer after three-pointer. So I'll always kid him. I, we didn't end up playing Shenango. I don't remember what happened. I think they ended up getting upset or something. And I always tell them, hey, Ziggy, listen, you weren't going to get those wide open three-point shots on my team. I had you scouted. And uh, it, listen, I'm not so sure I can stop them now because, you know, like most great three-point shooters, uh, the the arc isn't isn't the line anymore. I mean, these young men are able to to hit those three pointers from four, five, six feet behind the arc. And that's Braden Ziegler. Not only is he a, a dead eye as a shooter, but he gets it off really quickly, which is important if you're going to be a great shooter. So uh, well-deserved big week, a lot of points. Uh, he's one of the keys to the Wildcats making a big run this year. And they, you know, they have a lot of talented young men on that team uh, who I really, really think uh, could, could help them. And, a lot of them are baseball players. Zach Herb, great baseball player. Jimmy Rowe, great baseball player. Jason Malley, who we're counting on this year. And, of course, Brody McQuiston, the coach's son, is just absolutely fantastic. And Kyle Lenhart inside. This kid's a beast, man. He, he controls the paint. So I'm excited about the Wildcats. And congratulations to my man, Ziggy. He had a great week, and I'm sure he's going to have several more as the, as the year moves on. Yeah, and in Shenango, uh, right now, they are 2-0 and in Section 1-2A action and 7-2 and overall. And, Larry, uh, those three games last week, and it's been like this probably since the uh, holiday tournaments, they've been hit 10 three-pointers collectively as a team. I think one game last week they had 14, maybe in that Northgate game. 
Uh, they're, they're just on a roll from the perimeter right now, and that's the whole team. It's not just Ziegler. Uh, I, I really think that the, the defense is, even if they tried to do something against one guy, Shenango's uh, perimeter play, their strength is just so much that teams just can't stop it. It does. You, you can take one guy away, but you can't take out the you know the entire team. That's that's true, and and that's the game now today, Ronnie. Uh, mm-hmm. I was just reading uh, an article uh, in Sports Illustrated last week about the women's basketball coach from uh, uh, a college in Florida, Gulf Coast uh, College in Florida. Uh, he only wants a layup or a three point shot. You know, that's what you're looking for. And that's the way we played it at Newcastle for years and years. Analytically, those are the best shots to take. And uh, if you can't make three point shots in today's high school game, you're going to have a hard time winning. And as I said, uh, Shenango, I mean, they have three or four guys that can absolutely stroke it. Every guy on the floor can make a three. And I, I mentioned, you know, Brody McQuiston, Zach Kerr, Braden Ziegler, Jimmy Rowe, four of the five starters. Kyle Lenhart plays inside most of the time. You know, they can bring Hunter Lively off the bench, another one of my baseball players who can stroke it. So uh, this is a good basketball team. Uh, They're coached by Bobby McQuiston, who understands that in today's game, it's imperative to be able to shoot the three. I mean, that's where basketball is today. It it doesn't even resemble the game that I played when I was in high school. It, it's a completely different game. And, uh, you know, it, it's a game where if you can't hit a three, you're going to have a hard time winning basketball games, not only at the high school level, but at the collegiate level and in the NBA also. Right. All right. Shenango very likely could be one of the favorites in, in section play. I was speaking with Bob McQuiston the night of the uh, Northgate game. I remember he mentioned Aliquippa is one of the teams to beat. And I believe he, he noted uh, Northgate also, and they went down to Northgate and beat them by 15. Uh, last week, Ziegler, 69 points total in three games for the season. He has 173 in nine games for a 19.2 points a game average. And this season, he has 32 three-pointers. He's six games out of the nine. He's hit at least four three-pointers. So he's, he's deadly from, from long range, Larry. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the county, and there's a there's a bunch of good ones out there. Uh, but that Braden, he's been a dead eye since he was in ninth grade. I saw it as a ninth grader when I was scouting, and he's only gotten better as he's gotten bigger and stronger. Uh, when he was a freshman, I'm sorry, a sophomore catching for me, he didn't weigh 140 pounds. He may have been about five eight at the time. Now he's six foot and probably goes 170. And uh, he has a beautiful stroke and uh, he gets it off quickly. Again, you know, in today's game, you got to be willing to be a uh, you you can't take all day. This isn't a four horses game where you can line it up. You got to be ready to catch and shoot it. And he is and, and he's accurate. And as you said and you pointed out, you know, you lean too much his way. They will reverse the ball to Jimmy Rowe or if Zach Herb, the point guard, takes it at the top of the key. Uh, those guys are pretty deadly also. So it's a good basketball team, and uh, I expect them to do some really good things before the season's out. Yeah, what, what kind of defense are you playing them? Because if you're starting out in a, in a zone, they're shooting you out of that before the end of the first quarter, I'm sure. I am not playing them zone defense. There's no <laughs> chance. I'm guarding them man-to-man. I'll take my chances on the dribble penetration. You know, Brody McQuiston gets some pretty good dribble penetration. Zach Herb does also. Uh, and I would play a defense of no help. You cannot help on Braden Ziegler, and you can't help on Jimmy Rowe, because if you do, they will burn you. And uh, it reminds me of a game that we played against North Allegheny in 2014, the year we won the state championship. They had some great three-point shooters. Uh, We played their point guard, who was a really good player, man-to-man, and uh, we had Anthony Richards watching them, and that's our best defender at the time. And the point guard scored like 32 points because he was a great player. I can't think of his name right now. Uh, uh, but they, they didn't have a three-pointer in the entire game because we knew when they started hitting threes, you know, it, 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 became, uh, it, it became a very difficult team to, to defend and beat. So, you know, you got to pick your poison. If I'm guarding Shenango, I'm playing them man-to-man with no help, no help on 
on Braden Ziegler, no help on Jimmy Rowe, you know, if, if and I'm hoping that my guys can, can guard the ball and uh, I'll take my chances after that. All right. Congratulations to Braden Ziegler, six foot senior guard from Shenango High School. He is our athlete of the week for three great performances and three victories last week, 69 total points. Coming up next is our random topic that we have. It's one that Larry Kelly knows a lot about, so I should probably just turn him loose and walk away from the, from the screen and say, you know what, T talk to your heart's content. But before we get there, Bobby McQuiston, if I gave away any secrets of Shenango basketball, please forgive me. In other words, if some coach is watching this and they, and they basically uh, they put together the defense that I was talking about, I, please accept my apology. In a sense, no coach would listen to what I say, though. So there, Ralph Blondo never did. So there's yeah. a pretty good chance nobody else will either. Well, I'm innocent and he's guilty. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying on that one. All right. Our next topic is coming up. So don't go away. There's one thing I learned growing up around here. People should look out for each other. Be friends and neighbors that you can count on. So it bothers me when people who are hurt in automobile accidents get bullied by the insurance company. I don't let bullies run over my clients. I do what I was taught growing up. Step up, stand up, and speak up for those who can't. I'm Larry Kelly, and I'm a Newcastle guy. We're back with you here on Tip Off, and Larry Kelly is going to tell you everything you want to know about the Red Hurricane. Most specifically, this segment, we're going to talk a lot about Ralph Blundo. Why? Well, Coach Blundo hit the 300 win mark last week, Friday night, against Butler on the road. And uh, Larry, first off, just put it in your words what 300 wins means for any coach. You know what well, that might. I mean, that's a milestone. That that that's a career worth of victories and uh you know ralph i think is going into his 12th year at newcastle we started in 2010 so you know do the math and uh he had one year at george jr so to get to 300 wins in what amounts to 12 or 13 seasons is pretty special uh you know I still remember the very first meeting we had as a staff when Ralph got the job, we were sitting around a table and I've said this before, I looked around the table and I said to myself, I'm looking and there, there was probably five or six coaches around the table. You know, I'm looking at some of the toughest young men, guys that I competed against uh, sitting around this table. And I'm also looking at some, as some of the smartest guys that I've ever met sitting around this table. And I believe that's a key to any coaching staff. You have to be able to bring the toughness and, and get that toughness transferred to your players. But you also got to be, you know, I like to be the smartest guy in the room. I, I want my players to be the smartest players on the court. And, and, you know, that was present also. And Ralph has both attributes. He's one of the toughest guys I know. And, and he's one of the smartest guys I know. So you have the head coach who have those qualities and you have assistant coaches who each in their own right have one or both of those qualities. And I think that's why at Newcastle, you know, Ralph's had the success that he's had. But when they ask him about it and he will tell you he's had great players. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. You can't win without great players. And, and Ralph's had them. And all you got to do is look back at some of the players that we've had throughout the years. You know, we have two young men playing in the NFL. We've had four or five players who were all state first or second team. Uh, you know, we've had guys that just were tough and, and smart. And, and I think that's what leads to our success. Our guys are tough. You know, if Ralph has a gift and I tell him this all the time, all the coaches know the X and O's. And, 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 you know, most coaches are pretty tough guys, but Ralph gets our guys to play harder than even they think they can play. I, I don't know that any team that's ever played harder than us, you know, in a basketball game. And then when you match that up to, you know, the basketball IQ that he brings to the table, that all adds up to 300 wins in, in a relatively short time. 
you know, Larry, uh, we know the culture. We know the culture at Newcastle, the winning uh, success that they have, the formula, uh, the, the slogan of together, the teamwork that they have. But we also know the phrase that everybody will say, often imitated, never duplicated. You know, any pick a, pick a school, doesn't matter if it's county school or out east or wherever, they could do the same thing that Newcastle's doing, but it's, but it's really, it's a slogan. You have to get kids to buy in. So it's, it's coaching, you know, but, but that whole together thing, you know, the kids seem like they bought into that from day one. And that was back, as you said, 2010. And here we are 2023, early stages of 2023. So it's just, you know, class after class that comes through there, Larry, they, you know, they just buy, buy into that. You know, it, it started with the very first class and Ruff will tell you that, you know, uh, Corey Eggleston, Sean Anderson, Anthony Richards, uh, Brandon Dominic, Tone Rudolph, Stu Allen, Drew Allen, Malik Hooker. That was like the first class that came through and, and they set the tone. They set the tone. Sean Anderson, whose jersey one of these days will hang at the Naval Academy because of his experience there. Uh, they set the tone and everybody else followed suit. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very helpful to have a team like that. And we had that team for four years. You know, the team that won the state championship and those right before them, you know, we had them for three and four years. And it was the same group, and uh, they showed they showed the younger kids the way, and kids follow suit. And it starts at the lowest level. You know, the first year we were there, Bobby Natell, Bobby Natell was coaching the seventh grade team. Think about that. This is a coach with thirty years experience. Uh, he's coaches. Pat Kane was coaching the eighth grade team. There might not have been a better athlete in the history of Newcastle High School than Pat Kane. And so you had guys that were laying the groundwork so that when Coach Belundo got these kids, you know, he certainly finished the job. But, you know, it started at the lowest level. So uh, our kids play hard. Our kids play smart. You know, Ralph sets the tone and, and they buy in. And if you don't buy in, you can't play for Newcastle. You know, I used to tell kids all the time, even at the ninth grade level, this isn't for everybody. You know, there's a certain way we do it at Newcastle. And, you know, my line was, if it's all about you, that's fine. I'm OK with that. You just can't play for Newcastle High School. We're looking for guys that we can count on. We're looking for guys that play together, that are more concerned about the name on the front of their jersey and not the back. You know, we're looking for guys who buy in. And if you can't buy in, that's fine. Go play down to YMCA. And that's kind of the tone from the very first time you're you're putting on a Newcastle uniform. Turn back the uh, hands of time, you know, go back to 2010. Do you remember the first time when when Ralph was hired and he met met with the kids uh, for the very first time, his, his first sit down with the kids to, to say, I'm the new coach and and uh, here's what here you know here's what I expect out of you. Do you remember that time when he sat down with them the first time? Yeah, I mean we had our very first practice. I want to say in in he got the job probably in March. It was in April. I remember being in the auxiliary gym. Little Ralphie couldn't. He was a baby, uh, and we had kids in the gym, and there was no speech given. It was get on the line. And, and we started going to work. I, I just, I do remember that. And uh, Ralph was a little disappointed because some of the couple of the really good athletes who played the year before weren't there. And they weren't there when the season started either. You know, the, he wasn't going to lose his credibility. If you weren't part of the program from day one, meaning that if you didn't play, you know, in the summer, if you weren't there in the fall, then you weren't going to play come come when the ball tips off in in December uh, I remember one kid saying uh, coach when does practice start <laughs> and it was a really good basketball player and he was told it started in June hmm. and you're five months late you know so uh, 
it wasn't much of what he said. It's just, listen, we went to work on day one. And if you weren't there on day one to go to work, then you weren't going to be there when the balls tipped off in December. Yeah. I, to me, I would have to think that that first time you, you meet with a, with a program as, as a new coach, that's uh, that's the first brick, the, the first building building block that is put in, in motion to, to make a, you know, to build your culture. And I have to think that that, that day one was, was some sort of a special day for, for Newcastle because you're telling the kids who you are and what you expect, you know, and if, if you're not putting yourself out there in that proper way, that that, that program's just not going to grow the way you want it to. And I have to think that, you know, he, you know, he, he pretty much laid down the law, you know, so to speak, uh, you know, with those kids and, and it's taken off since then. I don't know if you agree or disagree with, you know, that first time you meet with somebody that's got to be, you got to put your best uh, impression out. You know, I, I didn't play football at Newcastle, but after he retired, uh, I, I had lunch with Lindy Laurel almost every day and he was a legend and he said it best. He said, kids are a little bit like animals. They can smell you. They know if they can, tr they can try you. They know. And uh, nobody was trying Ralph Blondo. Nobody. Oh. You understand? They knew from day one that I, I'm not trying this guy. Because if they did try him, they got their head bit off. And that was the end of that. And I, and I think that is important. It's the way you carry yourself. It's the way that you project. And, uh, you know, uh, Coach Laurel was right. Kids know if they can try you or not. And you set that tone from day one. And again, it, it's not necessarily what you say. It's how you carry yourself and uh, let them know that you mean business. Right. Okay, uh, Larry, anything else you'd like to say about uh, Coach Blundo and his 300 wins and uh, the importance of that? that figure? Well, you know, I, I, I always uh, I tell Ralph when I hit my knees at night, I thank God that he gives me gave me the opportunity to be to be part of that program. You know, I, I'm the coach of Chenango and I love those kids out there, but I'm a red hurricane at heart. And it, it was always my goal to be a coach at Newcastle high school. And uh, he allowed me to do that for, I guess he's been there 12 years. I was there 11. And uh, I, I have some great, great memories, uh, man, uh, of, of so many games and so many instances and so many practices uh, that I'll carry with me uh, for the rest of my life. So, Ralph, if you're watching this, thank you, brother. I could never thank you enough for giving me that opportunity. And, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll never forget it, and I always will appreciate it. Yeah, just a little heads up. Ralph, Ralph is watching. He's like Santa Claus. He's watching. He, he knows when you're, <laughs> when you're saying the, the right stuff and the wrong stuff, Larry. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. So. Well, again, I saw him last night. He practiced for the first time all year, man. I gave him a big hug and it, it was nice, man. And I got it. I'm telling you, I, I, you know, I, I miss it. I do. I, you know, I, I told you I wanted to start coaching from the sideline, but I knew that's not my role anymore. So I just stood there and watched. Now I'm surprised you didn't break out a, a, a familiar flip phrase with a little extra spin on it. Show me your coaches and I'll show you your team. Now that's show me your leaders and I'll show you your team. That's, that's why I said with a little with a little different spin on it. That's yeah, why. I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were out there working hard last night. Billy Humphrey, who's been there since day one. Uh, Jason Dunlap, who's been there since day one. Those guys were so instrumental in the success that Newcastle's had. Again, you're talking about some of the toughest guys and some of the smartest guys you'll ever meet that's part of that coaching staff. And, you know, it just, you, you, you combine that with great players that we've had and uh, great things happen. Yeah. And as great of a coach as Ralph is, he always tells you, you know, I've got great assistant coaches. And uh, you know, that's why I say, show me your coaches because he's always had great staffs, so no matter what, uh, what year you're talking. And, uh, and, and it's evident with the, with the results. Great, great student athletes, too, because uh, they're the ones, that, as he would say, they're the ones that win ball games, and he's had great talent. So uh, congratulations to Coach Blundo and 300 wins. You know, the countdown's on for 400. We'll, we'll, we'll quit. <laughs> it's uh, he might get there. He certainly might. Oh, he will. He will. Come on, Larry, give him some credit. No, my point is, you know, 
the question is how much longer will he do it? You know what I mean? Uh, coaching, it, it, it's, it's a grind, man. It's, it's 10 months a year. Uh, it's, it's 10 hours a day. And, uh, trust me, you know, if, if he's willing to stick it out a few more years, he'll get there. And, you know, that, that, that decision will be up to him. Sure. He'll be there as long as Ralphie's there. I know that. So he, we have a few more years to enjoy him. There you go. All right. Congratulations, Coach Blundo, again on 300 victories. No, no small accomplishment for sure. He's Larry Kelly. I'm Ron Pawnee-Waz. We thank you for joining us. Be sure to come back next week as we'll have another Athlete of the Week to tell you about and a fresh topic. We'll do that next week. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I became an attorney because I believe in hard work, fairness, and human decency. In a word, justice. Our workers' compensation clients deserve justice because in an instant, their hard work turns into hard times when they get hurt on the job. No doubt, life is tough, but so am I. I've been fighting all my life, and I'll keep fighting for you. I'm Joe George, and here in Lawrence County, it's personal.